So for those of you that are creating a product, um, I want to talk just a little bit about the merch process, getting merch created, depending on what you're creating. If you are not offering a product and you are only offering a service, don't feel like you have to watch this video. Um, you might find it helpful. Maybe eventually you're going to be offering products, uh, but I just want to give you a few things to think about that will be really helpful. Um, so first and foremost, as um, I mentioned in past videos, you're definitely going to want to think about your manufacturing costs when you are thinking about a product. How much is it actually going to cost you to create, to print um, your product? What type of materials are you going to use? You know, what are you using local materials? Are you sourcing them from someplace else? Are you gonna be offering different color and size options? These are all things that you need to decide um, at the very beginning. And then make sure that you are actually comparing different um, manufacturers. So when I say manufacturers, um, as I mentioned, I have this awesome card game like you and we went to my my business partners and I went to lots of different local manufacturers, local print shops and then started talking to print shops um, in different countries uh, to just to compare prices, you know, how much would it be to print X amount of cards? What would it, how much is it gonna to cost to print X amount of, of boxes? A question to ask is whether or not your manufacturer will actually package, um, will, meaning will you take the product, put it inside the back end package and wrap it up for sale? Uh, these are definitely things that you're going to want to consider. You can actually find a lot of um, domestic manufacturers online. Um, if you Google, you know, X, Y, and Z type of manufacturer. I was looking for a printer because we uh, printed a card game. Um, there are lots of options that come up. So it can be really helpful to, you know, just make to, to look at the different options that are, are local to you. Also, another thing that you can do is a lot of times with different products, you can actually look to see where they were manufactured. Um, sometimes people will, it'll have like a specific company name on like the back of a card or like made by this company or made whatever. Um, if people aren't doing that and they're not transparent about where things are being manufactured, um, you can obviously talk to somebody who is in a, a, a similar industry. Finding a mentor in your particular space is huge if you can do it. Where can you find a mentor? LinkedIn, you know, look for brands who are doing what you're doing. Hopefully if you're entering a space that you love and that you are actively studying and you're learning the people, you're learning who's in motion, you know, try get, send out emails, you know, contact, blind contact people. If you're gonna contact with someone, don't do it with the expectation that they have to respond because any response is an act of love and nobody owes you their time. Anyone willing to invest in you is a gift. Um, so don't ever expect a response, but who knows, you actually might find someone that wants to mentor, that wants to pour into you. Um, and I, I can't say enough, I have two awesome mentors. Do things for your mentors too. You know, it doesn't have to be a one-way relationship. Like yes, your mentors are there to help and guide you, but you can do nice things for them, cook them dinner one night or take them to lunch or, you know, my nice things somehow always consist of food, but there's so many nice things that you can do uh, for your mentors as well. So it's not always feeling like a give and take relationship. Uh, but it's really helpful to do your research and to know what different companies are charging so that when you're making a determination about who who you're going to use for manufacturing, um, you can also keep in mind what competitors are offering. Also, another thing to think about is shipping. If you are using a manufacturing company that's local to you, you can go pick up the product and ship it out yourself. If you are using a manufacturing company that is not local to you, you're gonna actually also want to make sure you ask how much it's going to cost to ship the items from them to you because that's another cost a lot of people forget to add into their costs. Another thing to think about um, potentially is drop shipping. So what's drop shipping? Basically, that's when your manufacturer or whoever is making the product, instead of sending the product to you and you sending the product out, they can send the product out direct, directly to customers. A lot of places will charge you extra for drop shipping, which makes sense. You're not having to keep track of things getting sent out. Um, and, and a lot of people love drop shipping. They never actually have to touch or see the merch. I actually have like boxes and boxes of cards in uh, my spare room in the front of the house right now. And so if you are not prepared to actually deal with merch and sell it yourself look for uh, 
companies that drop ship. There are tons and tons of of people, manufacturers that drop ship. And you can, again, do a quick Google search and find a particular manufacturing company that is willing to do that for you if you do not want to deal with having merchandise. If you don't mind having merch, awesome. Um, I personally feel like if you're starting your company and you're trying to make as much money as possible, sometimes you just gotta do a little bit of hustling, right? Like people put in orders, you at the end of every day, to, or getting when whenever your post office closes, you fulfill the orders of the day, you make a quick run, you drop them off. It can be really helpful for packaging. If you're thinking about doing that and sending out your own merch to start with, we don't have a system in place. Look on, um, you know, I hate to say it, Amazon, uh, but there are a lot of other places where you can buy actually packaging in bulk instead of having to go and buy packaging from the post office every time you send something out. So if you can buy boxes in bulk or if you can buy um, you know, envelopes in bulk, that can be really helpful too for sending it out. If you have a printer and you're using Shopify, Shopify actually lets you print out all of your labels so that you can put, um, you can print the labels right there and you get a discount as well for using Shopify. Um, you can print your labels, put it on your product, take it out to get shipped. You don't also have to, don't have to worry about figuring out the labels if you're using a platform like Shopify as well. So yes, merchandise. Um, I think if, if I, I definitely encourage you and I don't want you to feel scared about the process. If you are set on having some type of merch, the hardest part is coming up with the process that works for you. Again, this might be something that you're doing full time. This might be something that you're doing on the side. So you wanna be really realistic about if I am selling merch, do I have the capacity or is there somebody that can make runs to the post office every day or every other day, every time an order is coming in to, to make sure this product is actually being shipped out. Um, you also want to keep track of your invoices, how many people are ordering and whether or not you know, those items have been delivered. If you're doing everything yourself on your own website, it's going to be a lot of record keeping. If you're using a platform like Shopify or Squarespace or even Facebook Market actually allows you to sell products now, um, they will keep track of a lot of that information for you, which is really helpful. Either way, you're going to want to make sure you're keeping track of it someplace. And you're also definitely going to want to have an email address where people can reach you with questions or problems or concerns. You know, have, even if it's just a comment box on your website, you know, as someone who's probably been a customer before, it is so frustrating if you never get an order or an order comes in uh, before it's, it's, it's broken or something's wrong and it's impossible to get in touch with the company. That is the worst feeling ever. So you wanna have a way for people to get in touch with you. And you also wanna make sure that you are being responsive to people. Talking about customer service, we talked a little bit about customer service already. Part of having excellent customer service is responding to people in a timely manner. And you also want to make sure on your website or somewhere on your social media, wherever, that you are very clear about your return policy. Uh, that's another area where I think a lot of people get themselves into a lot of trouble because they're not clear about whether or not someone can return an item. Can they return the item for store credit? Is it going to be for money? Uh, you want to think about what your return policy is going to be and you want to have it someplace on your website if you are selling merch so that people are absolutely aware of what they're getting, what they're spending money on. Again, people are trusting you. They are giving you part of their resource. You want to sell and give a product that is, you know, not only an excellent product, but you want to curate an excellent experience for your customers. Uh, so these are all things that you're definitely going to want to think about if you are selling a product.